Hey guys, welcome back to my Arsenal career mode. In today's episode, we are going to finally sort out the Aaron Ramsey issue. I'm going to talk about what's happening in real life with Aaron Ramsey as well, because there has been some news coming out from the Arsenal club. Um, and also, I want to talk about the last episode because I'm pretty upset. Actually, quite a few people um, accusing me of cheating, saying that because I recorded a few games off camera, that I reduced the difficulty and somehow started winning. Sure, it can look like that, but at the end of this video, I'm going to show you proof, 100% proof, that I played those games on Ultimate. I don't want to be accused of cheating. Why... This is what really upsets me. Why would I? It's really quite upsetting when you make a video, you spend so long making a, a specific episode and then people just slam a dislike on it, leave a comment saying you cheated, unsubscribed, you know, whatever. So at the end of this video, I'll be showing you some proof. Not that I need to do that, but I'm going to. So what's going on with Ramsey? So apparently in real life, Arsenal and Aaron Ramsey are no longer talking about extending contract. They have been in talks for months and months. Ramsey apparently wants £250,000 per week. Now, just to put that into perspective, not many players are earning that much in the Premier League, except from a couple. One of them being Meza Ozil. Apparently, he's on £350,000 per week. Um, Aubameyang on £300,000, I think it is. So part of me feels like, you know what, Ramsey kind of has a point, um, but also... I don't think he's worth that much. I don't think Aaron Ramsey should be on 250000 per week. I think, although he's one of the longest-serving players at the club, he is the longest-serving player at the club right now, the fact that Jenkinson's going to out-survive him, wow, I've just thought of that. Jenkinson is still at the club. So whilst I, I kind of get what Ramsey's asking for here, like, you know, if, if Meza Ozil's on 350, or Bamiang, Lacazette, they're on 280, 300, why can't I have 250? But the reality is, those guys are superstars. They're game winners. I feel like with Ramsey, especially over the last year or two, hasn't really earned that status. I don't think he deserves 250000 per week. That's just coming from me. So what I'm going to do is, I want to keep the series as realistic as possible, even though it's FIFA. I'm going to let him go. I think I'm going to match whatever happens in real life. So if anything changes in the next few days before we get into the transfer window in the, in the game then I might decide differently. But for now, I'm going to go go ahead and sell him. I, I think I can I can do better anyway. He's worth probably 30 million or more. He's got eight months left on his contract in game. Um, and that reminds me, actually, we've got quite a few other players that are running out of contract. So we've got Welbeck, Ospina, Czech, Smithrow, Lichsteiner, Nelson, Monreal, Ramsey, Maitland, Niles, Asano. We've got a lot of players that not only need to be extended, but we'll ask for more money as well. Players like uh, Ospina will want more, I'm guessing. Welbeck will want a little bit more. Smith Rowe's going to want a lot more. So um, we will just have to go through them one by one. We've got quite a lot of money, though, so it shouldn't be an issue. But when it comes to uh, to Aaron Ramsey, it's going to be good night, I'm afraid. So we will be looking at some transfer targets as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and update you on my shortlist because I have added quite a few players and of course I haven't really been talking about it because we're nowhere near the window but uh, we're going to quickly go through it now especially with midfielders. These are all players that I'm interested in signing but if we look at centre mids this is obviously the most important position at the moment because we're looking at replacing Ramsey. We've got uh, two French players from Lyon there. We've got Draxler, uh, Kondogbia, Ducouré, Partey. We've got some really good choices. A lot of them are actually French, I've just realised. We've got four Frenchmen there. Draxler is someone that I'm definitely interested in, although I'm not so sure he quite replaces Ramsey. Doesn't play in a, in the same position. Although he's a centre mid, I'd rather get him playing at Cam. Um, but still, could work there. Um, you've probably noticed we've got a few other names on here. We've got Rafinha here, who plays for Sporting. Seems to be a really good player. We've got uh, a few left-backs here, because Monreal, he's already 79 rated. Uh, also got a right back here, Mbabu, really excited to potentially look into him. I believe he used to play for Newcastle, did he not? Um, but I was looking at his stats and they are ridiculous. So we might look at getting him. Still got Kimpembe on the list as well. Dembele, Coman and Bailey. So we've got some really expensive options and also some cheaper options that we can look at. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the transfer window. But for now, we've got some games to play on ultimate difficulty, okay? So here we go into the first game of this episode. We have Wolves at home. 
I was just thinking, has there been a better side in terms of individual players to have come up from the championship? Obviously, they've signed a lot of players since being promoted, but I can't remember a stronger squad being a promoted side. It's pretty crazy how good they've got. In terms of their midfield, going forward, even defensively, they've got some great players in there. So this is the formation I've been using a lot lately, a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-1-2-1-2. Torreira slightly higher than you would typically see a DM, but he, he works really well there. It just seems to work. Here is the Wolves team. They're going with their five at the back formation. Dendonka gets a start there. They've got uh, Moutinho in midfield, new signing. Five million bargain of the century there. Costa, Jota and Jimenez up front. So we've been doing a little bit better recently. Obviously because I cheated, right? Oh, honestly, I shouldn't have to keep mentioning it. I'm not going to mention it anymore until the end of this episode when I show you that proof. But uh, if you want to believe I did that, then whatever. I can't I can't stop people thinking it. But um, I'm hoping that I can continue this good form. We did get a draw against Liverpool. That was a very difficult game. But today against Wolves... Oh, God. Almost gave it away already. It'd be nice to get another win. But they are going to be difficult. Inside to Mesut here. Over to Xhaka. Through for Mesut again. It's not the best pass. Hang on. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. No. Oh, man. I've got to be putting that away. That was really bad. I didn't expect it to come through. Corner comes in. Aubameyang with the header. Saved by Patricio. It's been a good start. Here's Ramsey on the ball now. Should I be dropping him? Maybe I shouldn't be playing Ramsey anymore. If I'm going to be selling him, maybe I'd be better off putting in a youngster like Maitland-Niles or Gwenduzi, you know? Try and cross this one in. Go on, Aubameyang. Oh, it was a good header out. Here's Ramsey. Ah, oh, poor first touch. I'm going to have to sell him now. <laughs> is that a pen? Yes, it is. It's a penalty. I'm pretty sure he got the ball as well. We'll have to see the replay here. I'm not too sure that's a penalty. But then again, I've had plenty of occasions where I should have got a penalty, but didn't. And no, he didn't get the ball. So it is. it's definitely a penalty. Right, everyone, when I score penalty, says, oh, you should get rid of the marker. So I am going to. Okay, now watch me fail. Let's see if I can get it into the bottom right corner here. Yep, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> Actually, it was a good penalty. Just saved. That's the way it is. It is much harder without the, uh, the arrow, of course. And that's what I'm going to do from now on. I do get it. People think it's a little bit cheesy, isn't it, using the arrow. Here's Ramsey. We're still on the attack here. Cross coming in. And there's going to be no one to get the loose ball here. Oh, poor first touch, though. This can still carry on, this attack. Into Mesut. Over to Ramsey. And it's saved by Patricio again. I think that's going to be half time. There we go. No goals, but we've definitely been the stronger side so far. I don't think Wolves have really had any chances. So we're, we're looking good. We can win this. Let's go down this left side. Here's Kolasinac. I don't really want to cross it. I'm going to try and run inside here. Back here to Torreira. Over to Ramsey. Hit that. Oh, it is beautiful. Patricio can't save that one. And Aaron Ramsey, the player who will no longer be at Arsenal in January, scores. I do feel kind of odd about it. It's like, come on, it's Aaron Ramsey. He's been at the club for so long. Since I can remember. And it's a great goal as well. I mean, that that is what he brings to the team every now and again. Aaron Ramsey is a goal-scoring midfielder. So I'm definitely going to have to try and replace that. And the, the targets I've put in my shortlist are all quite defensive players, I noticed. Except from one of them from Leon, the uh, AUR guy. I need to, to learn how to say his name. So maybe he is going to be the ideal replacement for Ramsey. Oh dear, we could actually concede here. Never mind, Socrates. Nicely done. Now here come Wolves again on the counter-attack. It's Raul Jimenez. Costa with the ball in. And they've scored. Just like that. Damn, man. That, that's their first proper attack. Oh, it's so frustrating when that happens. And he's ran all the way to the manager to celebrate. It's a very good cross. First time from Costa. Mustafi didn't even jump. Torreira's never going to win a ball in the air. He's freaking five foot one. Oh dearie me. Clean sheet gone and now we need to find another goal. Oh no. I thought I was going to clear that. No, 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 no. Wait, what? I think it's a penalty. And a red. Oh, jeez, Matt. What have I done? Is it a penalty or is it a free kick? Both players slid in. That's some sort of bug. I, I haven't slid in with two players there. It is a penalty. I've got to save this. Top left. 
Oh! I went top left, but it saved it bottom left anyway. Leno... Oh, please just clear this, actually. Don't try and pass it out. Leno saves the day there. Although we're down to 10 men, I'm going to have to make some changes now. I'm actually going to take Lacazette off here and play with one striker. We'll bring on Koscielny. Uh, swap those guys around like that. Actually, while I'm doing that, we should probably bring in a new midfielder as well with some fresh legs. Everyone's a bit tired, though. We'll put Iwobi on, just fresh legs, instead of Ozil. And I'm going to go with Gwenduzi instead of Ramsey. Let's try that. Okay, so we've managed to avoid going 2-1 down, but we are down to 10 men. This could be a very shaky last few minutes. Oh, God. And they've brought on Adama Traore as well. That's not going to be nice. How many minutes added on is it going to be? Is it two? Yep, yeah, two minutes added on. I'm taking the draw at the moment. I still cannot believe I got sent off. When it wasn't even me. I think I slid in with the other player, not Mustafi. I, I don't really know what happened there. But we've survived. That could have easily been another loss. Into training now. And Iwobi finally is 78 rated. Xhaka and Bellerin recently went up by one. So they'll take a little bit more time. But those three players I'm still focusing on right now. Uh, okay, we've got some scout reports back. That's good news. Let's take a look at some of these players then. Transfer hub. So we know some of these ratings already. Um, and Barbu's 76. Okay. Now this guy from RB Leipzig. I'm actually considering using him as a right back instead. As a replacement potentially. But the fact he can play at centre back is really good as well. Really quick player as well. Look at the uh, acceleration and sprint speed. So definitely looking to potentially get him in the window. We've got Mendy and Max. Two left backs there. Quite similar ratings. But Mendy... Little bit younger, probably has a higher potential, and he's got well, four star skills and the four star weak foot. Wow, okay, I'm probably gonna make him my number one left back target just because of that. Now, this is the guy I was talking about in terms of replacing Ramsey. I think this is the closest we're gonna get. He's he's pretty good going back, but he's really good going forward, a real technical player. So, I think he's gonna be right up there as one of my top targets, another French player. We've got Ndombele there as well. Could be a really good replacement for Ramsey. I think those two are probably the best we could go for. Draxler's going to be very expensive, but as you know, we've got the money. Rafinha is 79 rated, and we're still waiting on Kondogbia and Partey's ratings. But I think these guys, all three of these, they're a bit more defensive. So maybe not ideal to replace Ramsey, but maybe in the future, if we need a CDM, these guys could be good shouts. I know in real life, we're looking at Decore, so could be a realistic signing. But yeah, so far, with all of these shortlisted players, I'm pretty happy with all their ratings. It's just working out which ones to prioritise and which ones not to bother with, really. Now, moving on into our next Premier League game, we have Bournemouth away from home. As you guys know, one of my favourite sides in the Premier League. I absolutely love Bournemouth. Here's their uh, their lineup. The reason I like them so much, not only did I do a, a really fun career mode with them a couple of years back, but I used to go to Bournemouth every single year with my with my family, kind of like a, a short holiday over the weekend. I, I used to go past their stadium all the time. I'm yet to go inside though. Um, you saw their lineup. Looks like they're going with a very strong team. I've gone with my strongest lineup. The only change, of course, is Mustafi comes out because of the red card. And Koscielny comes in. Oh, and Gwenduzi. I, I've brought Gwenduzi in for Ramsey because it makes sense to play a player that's going to be here for the long term. You know, <laughs> it would be, it'd be silly of me to play Ramsey, upgrade him, you know, train him when he's just going to be sold soon. Although, technically, he could be worth more money. And blimey, the passing there was unreal. Am I playing against Bayern here? Sorry, but I thought it was, I thought it was Bournemouth. Here we go. Should be through here. Ozil over to Lacazette. I need Aubameyang to get in the box here. It's a good ball in, Aubameyang. Oh, wow. That is one of the best finishes I've, I've scored so far. It looked so simple. But trust me, I don't think I've scored like that in FIFA 19 yet, where they kind of just flick it. It was a really good delivery from Lacazette. Those two combining once again. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that is... Stunning. I, I don't care what anyone says. Yes, long shots are beautiful. Bicycle kicks. But goals like that are actually my favourite. I love it when you see just a weird type of animation type finish. You know, where they just side foot it in or whatever. It's just so, so satisfying. And we are 1-0 up because of it. Can we make it 2-0? Over to Torreira now. Great first touch. Over to Ozil. In for Lacazette. 
Back to Ozil. What a goal. This could be. It's beautiful football. And we are 2-0 up. I am mastering this ultimate difficulty. Yes, I didn't win the last game. But come on. That is just... That is not easy to do on ultimate. They defend you so tightly. But I've done a beautiful bit of play there between three or four Arsenal players just to work through. And Meza Ozil makes it 2-0 after a really shaky start. All of a sudden, we're winning 2-0. Here's Montero. He stayed onside. He's offside now, surely. No? No way. Come on, that was offside. Oh, right before half-time as well. How many crosses do I concede on this game? It is unbelievable. Oh, and that's that's a great camera angle. <laughs> the stadium is clipping into the replay. Nice. Let's start the second half strongly here. Guendouzi. Okay, yeah, great start. Getting tackled on the edge of the box. Tried to get it through for Lacazette. Bournemouth have a free kick here. In a pretty decent area, just 31 yards out. They passed it short to Defoe. He's tried to pass it through, but Xhaka was there. Corner now for Bournemouth as they take off Kazri and bring on King. That's not good. Oh, Defoe almost makes it 2-2. Another corner to defend. It looks like they're going to pass this one short. That's interesting. Xhaka should be there. Oh, God. Well done, class snatch. Just clear that one out. I've not really been able to do anything in this second half, so maybe now's the time I can really punch through this defence again. Aubameyang deflected and off the bar. Ozil wins the header, which is going to go straight to Begovic. 11 minutes left on the clock. Go on, Aubameyang. Just put it over the top. Oh, go on. Yes, he's there. Ha <laughs> I knew he would. Aubameyang now to finish the game. Yes, there we go. Low driven shot. Oh, and there's the, the, the good replay system again. How is that? not being picked up honestly it blows my mind but there we go 3-1 we are going to be getting three points against a very good Bournemouth side today blow the whistle referee blow the whistle actually no don't one more attack <laughs> there we go three points in the bag Bournemouth were good I'm not gonna lie they were actually very decent today so I'm quite proud of that win I am definitely getting better guys FIFA 19 is it's really difficult on ultimate difficulty, but there are little things you can do to really beat the, the CPU. A lot of fake shots seem to, to help, and just changing direction of the play. That's That second goal I scored, that's literally what I did. Just change the way you're passing every pass. Just go left, then right, then left. They can't really cope. So there we go. Really happy with that. So we're now going to go into our next Europa League game against Bologna. Changing up the team completely. Check in goal. We're going to give Mavropanos his European debut, I guess it is. Uh, he's going to go next to Holding, Lichdiner and Monreal at the sides. we then got El Elneny, Maitland-Niles and Ramsey coming in for this one. Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang keeps, keeps his place with Welbeck on the left. Although maybe, maybe there's someone else I could play instead. Um, we don't really play with wingers at the moment, so I can't get Nelson and Smith-Rowe in. But I might, I might give them a go. Maybe in the second half I could bring one of them on as a striker. I'm going to bring Nelson on the bench and take off Lacazette there. Um, but I was thinking, because Mustafi's back, maybe I shouldn't be... Oh, I don't know. We'll bring Mustafi on the bench in case. Because Mavropanos and Holding, it's a pretty weak and low-rated partnership. So if we are struggling, then maybe I'll bring Mustafi in. But that's the lineup. So here's the group table. At the moment, Sporting are top. We are joint top on seven points. Bologna have actually been pretty poor, which I'm quite surprised about. They've got some great players in their team. So although it could be a challenging game today, they are bottom of the group. We should be winning this. And we have definitely struggled in the Europa League. Well, we, we've struggled in the Premier League as well. But as I've said recently, I feel like I'm working out the systems a little bit. I'm getting used to the game. This is the kind of game where I really should be beating them comfortably. Oh, God. Space on the right side. Where is Mavropanos? I've conceded already. Jeez, I had both my defenders and Lichsteiner running at the player with the ball. Monreal's nowhere to be seen, and they just they just pass it through. We're 1-0 down within 10 minutes of this game. Oh, no, Monreal was there, but why? Maitland-Niles isn't going to com come back and cover you completely. Oh, dearie me. That's not a good start. Could get an instant reply here, though. Through for Bamiyang. Is he on side? I think he is. He is. That's going to be a goal. We've replied instantly. <laughs> One all. And guess who scores again? It's Aubameyang. Of course it is. He's just so good. This was literally from kickoff. The kickoff glitch returns. He's just about on side. I'm guessing it was very close. But what a finish. Right into the corner. Unsavable. 
No looking back now. We can get this, this game under control. Put that over on the left side for Monreal. It's a lovely ball. Into the box now. Oh, no one's there. Not one of my strikers or midfielders got into the box there. But here's Ramsey going to drive it. Oh, just, just, just no, no. Why, Ramsey? Why are you doing this to me? I can't sell you now, can I? If you're scoring goals like this, I shouldn't be replacing him. But I'm going to. <laughs> Ramsey with an absolute masterclass there. That's two fantastic goals in this episode. He really is trying to convince me to keep him. Look at this, though. Just drives it into the same place where Aubameyang put it just ten minutes before. Six minutes before, even. And there we go. We've turned it around already. Oh, they're going to score again here. No way. Conceded right before half time once again in injury time. And it's two all. I've, I've got to be honest, though. Okay, I know people are going to say it's an excuse. But Mavropanos and Holding... It's, it's not helping, <laughs> that's for sure. They're, they're not quite at this level, but I'm going to keep going here. I, I, I can always bring Mustafi on in this second half. Maybe I should. I, I don't want to lose this game. I think Mavropanos, maybe in the FA Cup early rounds you can play, but Mustafi's going to come in. We'll switch those guys around. Maybe that will help me a little bit more defensively because we're quite literally conceding very easy goals to defend. It's partly my fault, of course, but... Doesn't help when you've got a 68 or 69 rated defender in there, partnered up with Holding, who's only 74. Let's see if we can have a good delivery in from Mkhitaryan. It's not bad at all. Oh my god, we've scored from a corner. Praise the Lord himself. The FIFA gods have allowed us to score from a corner. I've heard everyone saying that corners are massively overpowered in Ultimate Team. In career mode, I'm... I'm inclined to say yeah, because I win a lot of headers, but I don't actually score them very often. And that is one of the worst headers I've seen that we've actually won. Give that to Maitland-Niles. Look at this. Loads of space to run into. Mkhitaryan on the right. Aubameyang down the middle. Welbeck on the left. We're going to go Mkhitaryan on the right. Aubameyang's in the box. Can he score again? Yes, he can. Is he offside? Again, I'm pretty sure that was offside. Mkhitaryan has been unbelievable. Every time I use him, though, I say the same thing. He's just so good. Same with Maitland-Niles. I've said it a few times in this series already that these guys maybe should be starting more games. They're just so good. Almost gave it away there, Maitland Nars, but Mikatarin picks it back up. Over here to Aubameyang on the right side here. Chipping across for Welbeck. What? What just happened? I think it might be an own goal. I, I need to see this replay, but I don't think that came off Welbeck. What a weird goal. Let's see this again. Oh my god, it, it actually is it's well back. How has the defender missed that? And the, the goalkeeper didn't even stick out an arm. Into three minutes of added on time here. Holding clears it. We've just brought on Nelson up front. Be great if we could get a goal for him as well. Let's see if we can put him through. Oh my god, what a pass. Nelson, please finish this. No! That was our sixth goal of this game. Ruined. Let's get a corner in instead. Win it. Holding wins it. It's going to be another corner here. We're five minutes in. Honestly, right. This is going to be our last chance of the game to get a sixth goal. Nelson's there. He's never going to win the header. But that is going to be the end of this game. And what a way to win a European game. 5-2. A hat-trick for Aubameyang. He's going to go ahead and grab the ball. But most importantly, it's a win. Hopefully, Sporting did drop some points and we can win our group. So let's go ahead and take a look at the group stages. So, wow, we're actually top now. That's really good. We've got one more game to play. We're pretty much guaranteed to go through um, because Olympiacos, we've beaten them twice, haven't we? So I think it's not goal difference. It's head-to-head -head results that puts you through, maybe. I don't know if that's the case in FIFA, but we're three points clear of them. So we are, I think we're going through here. Three wins from five, one draw, one loss. It started off pretty poorly, but we've turned it around there. Bologna already out, of course. They've conceded 11 goals. <laughs> wow. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the games here. I'm now going to jump into the final part of this video where I want to prove to the haters. I know I don't have to, but I'm going to because I, I can't stand being accused of cheating. So I'm going to show you exactly the footage that was edited. So I'm going to show you going into the games on Ultimate so you guys know. 
I played on Ultimate, I just had some good games. Right, so as you guys know, it was four games that I recorded off camera. I wanted to focus on learning the gameplay, giving myself a chance to get some points back because I made such a bad start. You don't realise the pressure on a YouTuber that normally does quite well in, in a series is known to be above average but not fantastic at FIFA, all of a sudden losing a lot of games, really struggling to play and actually not necessarily enjoying the gameplay, I needed, I needed that time. I needed to play a couple of games off camera and it won't be the last time that I do it. Sometimes in a YouTube series, specifically a career mode series, you need to get some pace on it because it starts to lose a bit of interest with your viewers and if it's a bunch of boring games that no one really cares about, you just play them off camera, show the highlights and then get back into the live com. That's all, that's all this was. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into each match here, showing you that I went into each game on ultimate difficulty. So this was the first game. We had Fulham. And look, I'm not going to... I might pause it to show you things, but I'm not going to do anything here. I changed the weather. Sometimes I play on five minutes. Sometimes I play on four. Typically when I play games off camera, I'll play on four minutes. But look, it's on ultimate difficulty and I'm loading into the game. Let's go ahead and find towards the end of the game here. Uh, look, 2-0, 63 minutes in, 68, 80 minutes. This is the game that I showed you, played on ultimate difficulty. Let's get into the next one. So up next was Leicester City, as you can see here. I'm hovering over team management. I go to play match, loading into the game, and then we get the result. Let's go ahead and skip in here. Uh, what's the score? 1-0 at the moment. Getting towards the end of the game here. And there we go in the 89th minute, 90th minute, 1-0, added time, 2 minutes. And then we get the 1-0 win. Simple as that. Next game. Next one was Olympiakos in the Europa League. Ultimate difficulty, 4 minutes, foggy weather. I'm hovering over play match. Sometimes I leave it for a second in case I want to show you the lineup this way. I'm loading into the game. And let's go ahead and skip to the end here where we've got the results. 0-0 at this point. I really struggled to score in the first half. And then towards the end of the game, I started to absolutely destroy them. 2-0, right to the end here. They made a sub. There you go, 2-0 against Olympiakos. That's the gameplay that I showed you. And then going into the fourth game, which was Crystal Palace. Ultimate difficulty, cloudy four minutes, loading into the match. And then as you can see, this was the free kick I scored to make it, was it 3-0? Let's just double check. They went down to 10 men. No, it was 2-0 at this point. And then we made it 3-0 towards the end, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It was Aubameyang with that final goal. And there you go, guys. I mean, I don't know what, what more I can show you. Um, I, I get it if a YouTuber is really struggling and then suddenly, oh, they want to play off camera and then they win four in a row. I do get it. But in the future, I want you guys to know this. I promise to you, I do not use sliders to make it easier. I do not drop the difficulty unless I tell you I've done it, which I just don't do. This series with Arsenal, until I say otherwise, every game is on ultimate difficulty. It's the new difficulty. My whole series has that in the title. It's ultimate difficulty in every title because I want it to be the hardest career mode I've done. And it really is the hardest. But as you've seen in this episode, these games that I've played, I'm definitely getting better at the game. And as you've seen now, the proof is here. The four games I played in the last episode were on ultimate difficulty. I'm not going to prove it to anyone else again. But because it's the first series of FIFA 19, I've got quite a few new subscribers. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that I'm not cheating. It doesn't make sense for a YouTuber to cheat in their own series. It's an offline series. There is no, no need for it. I'm not cheating to get an advantage for anything, am I? It's just a career mode. So please, for those of you who were upset and thought that I cheated, this hopefully clears it up. What more can I say? Thank you so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Just make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a like as well.